Ahoy, shipmates! It's uh, been a lovely day out on Southampton water. I was out for a little spin on uh, another captain's flybridge boat. It was marvellous. Ahoy there, Hell's Bells, and ahoy there, Tizzy Sea. Yes, it indeed it was tizzy. It was it was pretty good down the water. Amazing weather, considering we're almost in the middle of November. Uh, it was sunny. There was a bit of a tailwind, which, as we came back up Southampton Water, was wonderful. I was going to try live streaming my new 360 degree camera, uh, and I ran into a bit of an issue, uh, and I realised I needed a laptop to set it up with. And so. As, as is the want of these things. And preparation is all key, and I, the captain, failed to prepare. So, what have we got this evening? Well, we have the Iona in front of us here on Earth 46. I've noticed that there is quite a lovely sunset going over here. This is from Netley Cam. We'll be utilising that quite a bit later. What else have we got? We have a cow's cam at the moment. I'm still having, <laughs> still having issues talking to it. I need to get on with that and sort that out uh we've got uh that's the map of what's going on in port so ventura is our first departure of the evening she's at the other end of port facing the right way so should be fairly quick and then we've got iona who's on cruise cam and she's down here and then msc virtuosa well she, she's probably eight o'clock so i'll probably probably take a bit of an intermission galley break in between so just to recap what is going on, we have uh, Ventura departing any moment now. I haven't had an update on that one. And Iona departing at six, bit of an intermission, galley time, always essential. And then MSC Virtuoso at eight. Current weather is an incredible 15 degrees centigrade, which... Considering it's five o'clock in the evening and it's November is remarkable. Had a lovely double sort of high tide, it extended high tide this afternoon that made uh, docking easier. Uh, a bit of a breeze though, that was certainly coming up south up to water, helped us on the way back, May very comfortable indeed. 100% humidity, visibility 25.9 miles, I'd say that's very good. Excellent visibility there, shipmates. I don't have the uh, VTS radio working at the moment. I've had a cable arrive this morning, so I, I'm all ready to upgrade that to something new. I'm using a software-defined radio now rather than a separate handset. It kept, kept causing me trouble. I'm not entirely sure why. The quality would come and go. I would try different things, and it would help, and then it would go back again. I'm, it was all a bit of a mystery, but I've been playing with the software-defined radio which is essentially a little dongle you plug in the side of the computer, and that's much clearer. I don't think I don't think there is don't think it's quite as sensitive, but it certainly is much clearer in the quality. So we'll be uh, we'll be having that as soon as I can get around to installing that. Hopefully next week sometime. Ahoy there, BK four 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 four. Ahoy there, Mark Crabtree, who said uh, got off Iona this morning. Bay of Biscay was kind both ways, thankfully. Oh, well, this time of year, you're absolutely right, shipmate. Can be, I mean, why has this been the Bay of Biscay? I've heard a few uh, yachtsmen calling it the washing machine. Well, there, Gavin Hodgkins says uh, Iona's looking impressive. Well, she, she is. She's got a few lights on an Iona. It does light up quite nicely for the evening departures. She won't be leaving till six, but we can have a quick zoom in on the the flashy lights in the center i'm afraid the captain is rather partial partial to a few flashy lights i'm easily pleased let's have a look what can we see i think someone said they do a sail away party or something and there's a big light show that goes on much clearer oh i can see quite a few shipmates on the balconies like i say big looking at the temperature what was the temperature again oh. It was 15, wasn't it? Yeah, 15.3 degrees C. So quite a pleasant evening to be out there on your balcony. Let's have a look, see if there's 
any movement in Ventura. Oh, I would be inclined to say there's some movement in Ventura. Looks to me like the astern is adrift. I think she's moving. Let's see. It will tell us what the speed is. 0.2 knots. Okay, that's good. So Ventura is departing more or less bang on time. Uh, we'll probably see her on screen, I would think, in about ooh, 15 minutes, maybe. Something like that. Probably get on Netley Cam first. And then we'll have her on Cruise Cam after that. Right, I'm just sorting out a few little things here. That's that. Okay, right. Ah, good. Plenty of shipmates in the chat. Hoi there, Kevin Phipps. And hoi there, Gavin Hodgson's. I says, oh, he likes it loud as well. Hoi there, Marina Claire. And hoi there, Liz H. Bit says, been on Iona three times. Amazing ship. Amazing holidays. Well recommended. There we go. I do think a lot of positive, do see a lot of positive comments about Iron, which is a good thing. Um, that's not what we want. Oh, I'm going all wonky here. There we go. That's better. Um, I've only got the one screen here, and it does make it does make things slightly awkward sometimes. <laughs> uh, I. To have my, my dual screen setup return that makes life a lot easier. Ends up looking a bit like a mission control, but more effective. Oh, there, Mark the Shark. Hello. And Liz H says, We'll be doing an Ahoy Shipmates for the. Uh, will you be doing. Uh, will I? So was a question. Will I be doing an Ahoy Shipmates for Avia Maiden on the 23rd of December? Currently, I am planning on that. Certainly am, shipmates. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what I will be doing. If the weather's good, I I have had someone um, where I've been doing some work with, and he said he'll fly a drone for me. And so he'll fly the drone so we can have aerial departure. But it also depends on the time. If it's dark, it's not a lot of use. So I'll have to uh, have to work on that. Oh, excellent spanner. Etienne Raw is in the chat. Ahoy there, Etienne. But yes, I'll, she'll certainly be covering in one way or the other. Oh, there, Lisa Sargent says the Queen Victoria. We watched her depart yesterday. She's past Ramsgate and heading to Rotterdam. Oh, she's taking her time, there, isn't she? Oh, there, Kitty. Pause. So it's excited to be back on Iona in September. I wonder where you're going in September. That's quite a long time. That's a long time to wait. Oh, there, Venice Wells from a warmish South Wales. Yes, it certainly is warmish. It's certainly warmish here as well today. I'm not sure what your weather's been like in South Wales, but it's been marvellous here. Oh, there, Stefan Prince says, What time is your due? I own is due to depart. Yeah, all the important questions here. So we've got Ventura is on the move at the moment. And then we have Iona due to depart at six o'clock. I'll have a quick intermission while I nip to the galley. And then eight o'clock, we have the MSC Virtuosa. I've got to check on Iona Ventura. Yes, Ventura is definitely, she's definitely free of the dock now. Uh, I imagine she's still maneuvering sideways using a combination of bow thrusters and azipods. Currently 1.1 knots. Good, good, good. Uh, um. Oh, there, Kitty Paul says, uh, ask the captain, when am I going on Iona? Well, funny you should ask that. I don't know. But I have been talking to uh, a shipmate, and he's... Recommending that I might be able to get some uh, on some of the new departures of ships as a as a press. Anyway, we'll see how that goes. Uh, I the spanner Kevin Two's uh, keeping us up to date with the departure times. Well, the spanners are every 
excellent on the channel here. I couldn't do it without the spanners. They certainly know what's going on. Probably know more than I do most of the time as well. With us, Steve C. He's uh, Stephen Eileen from in Basic Stoke. Uh, oh, he's on a grog call. Yeah, I could do with a bit of grog as well. Been a while. With well, Kevin Phipps said, enjoy the other video today. Oh, it was lovely going up the Hamble River. Normally we try and go to the Jolly Sailor Pub, but we were in a very large, uh, well, very large, let's say, but it was a 48-foot vessel, so you'd have to find somewhere to moor up and then take the tender because you can only arrive at the Jolly Sailor by tender. But uh, no, we'll try it again another time. Just such a great day. Uh, the boat I was on has been recently anti-fouled. Well, I say recently, it was probably about four months ago. And it's good to take it out every now and again to get it to to blow off all of the the rubbish that's stuck on underneath. My laptop appears to be taking off. Hands are racing ten to a dozen. Well, there, David Templeton Craig. Uh, Oh, Etienne says it's nice and calm. It certainly is. It's lovely out there. Really, really amazing weather. Well, they're from Christine uh, from South Yorkshire. She says, nice to hear your voice again. Just returned home after two weeks on Iona. Thank you for the quotidian commentary. Oh, two weeks on Iona. Excellent. I hope you had a good trip. Everyone seems to be enjoying that. Oh, Steph P's there somewhere. Oh, there's Steph P. Boy, there. Someone else, Bur, Bur Tikuil. Sorry, I was a tricky name that one. Liz H says, "Will you be going on a Reva shakedown on the twenty-first? I'd like to. That is what I would like to. Obvious. I'm going to call her a Reva because I'm, I'd oh, actually I'll probably won't be able to go on if I call her a Reva. I should call her the proper name on those and let me on. Will I? I would like to go on actually. Yes. Um. I'm trying to uh, see if I can wangle that. We're not sure if it will happen. I'm not sure I quite have the credentials yet, although maybe I do. I've got quite a few followers, quite a few subscribers, all important. So that's a good opportunity for me to mention that if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do think about subscribing, because then I can persuade the P&O office, press office, that I'm a legitimate reporter, and I won't be spending all my time in the bar drinking room. And I will, in fact, be covering uh, the ship. So <laughs> please subscribe. Now, yeah, Ventura not on camera just yet. Oh, there, Bay Blue. Oh, oh there, Peter Groves. I oh, appear to have lots of people in South Yorkshire at the moment. Boy, the hill train says that uh, VTS is uh, says that uh, Ventura is just setting off. Indeed, yes, Ventura is more than just setting off. She's making some positive moves down the river test towards Mayflower Park. In fact, she's just passing MSC Virtuosa today. Unfortunately, I'm not in port at the moment, so I don't have any sound. But there could well be some. Hooting and honking between the two ships, although they're not related, so they probably won't be. But I imagine Ventura will be honking at Iona. As I mentioned before, I think Iona has a, a poor quality horn. It seems to be as loud as some of the other ships, I'm not sure why. If I get on board, I'll have to ask the captain the question, why is your, why is your horn so quiet? Probably seeing her very shortly on Netley. She'll be coming from the right-hand side behind all this 
I was going to I was going to say behind all this junk and rubbish. And there's not junk and rubbish. It's a couple of grain silos and a row row. So went past that one earlier. Looked quite smart. They were loading. What were they loading on the back of that road? They were loading. Well, I would imagine there must be some sort of uh, agricultural or uh, sort of road maintenance machinery, long conveyor belt things. I'm never entirely sure what they're meant for. But they all fold up and they, they travel on the back of those. Got the back of those ships. It's getting quite dark now. That's a shame. Let's put the check on. Oh, there one down this boat says any update on Perry One? I am working on it. It's very complicated. I don't want to go into details as to all the problems, but I think there is light at the end of the tunnel with regards to that one. If all of my spanners put out, probably a train coming towards me, <laughs> which is probably true. But it is it is being worked on. It's just I I don't want to go into details, but it's very complicated. Oh, there, David. Templeton Craig says Highlands and Islands Glencoe. Oh, Glencoe. I like Glencoe. I've been cycled through Glencoe. That was really enjoyable. Lovely, lovely landscape. I cycled through in, I think it was April time, and it was hot and sunny. It was almost 20 degrees C. And then a week later, it had the best powder in Europe for snowboarding. Glad yeah. I wasn't cycling through it then. With their Judy Pickles says she caught me this afternoon. It was a lovely day on the boat. It was indeed. I was out with a friend on his on his boat. He wanted to do a little bit of a shakedown. Get some of those barnacles off the bottom. He moors it round on the river Itchin. For some reason that's the growth on the bottom of the boat on the river Itchin seems to be way more than anyone else. Actually, most of the boats in the area seem to be really uh, extensive. I don't know why. I don't know if it's a combination of the fresh water and the salt water. Whereas in Pool Harbour, uh, I've got some boats that I go on in Pool Harbour, and they, they seem to be pretty good. They hardly get anywhere near the amount of growth on the bottom. Growth on the bottom, of course, is bad for your speed and performance. Uh, for example, the boat I was out on today. That it can, when it's in fine fettle, it'll just about hit 32 knots. 31 point something most, most of the time. But as soon as it gets some dirty bottom and dirty repellers, it, the speed can drop right off to about 14 knots. And that's still using the same amount of fuel. So not very good for your fuel economy when it halves. I'm guessing that Ventura must be getting close to being on camera shortly. Yeah, it's just passing Mayflower Park. I realise I've made a video, a little film of the boat show, so I need to finish and release that. I've been slightly waylaid doing some other things lately, shipmates, but I oh, should be back on to churning out some films. There you go, there's Ventura just passing Mayflower. With their case, that you enjoyed the captain's adventure today. Yeah, I was like I said, I was trying to uh, broadcast a live stream from my 360 camera, which I needed a laptop to set it up. And the captain hadn't made any account for that. And I failed to bring my laptop with me, and I didn't plan in advance. Failing to plan is planning to fail, as my flight instructor. <laughs> Used to bang on about it, if I seem to remember correctly. I'm just going to shut some things off a second. I've just remembered I haven't turned a few things off. One moment, please.
there we go right that's all sorted i should have full internet i had some other things running i have forgotten to turn off and it consumes some of the internet bandwidth stream i don't have very good internet connection at this location i'm currently at and i need as much as possible to broadcast broadcasting uses lots of upstream bandwidth but you typically don't use as the average internet user i seem to use a lot of it here uh, I see what is it in cinema barnacles yes that's it barnacles blasted barnacles I, they certainly do it's not actually the hull that seems to be the problem the anti foul on the hull it seems to be excellent at repelling the barnacles but what seems to happen is that the barnacles attack the propellers and you end up with what you thought were propellers turn into just lumps of something underneath the boat and then they just they just don't work it just churns up the water very ineffective well, there, Judy Pickles, did, did you go past Cowshot? No, we didn't, didn't go that far. We went down to Southampton Water to uh, the River Hamble and turned left up the River Hamble. In fact, we did a high-speed turn, which was quite, which was quite fun. It's uh, quite amusing when you get 16 tonnes of boat right on its side. <laughs> uh, but let's hold the visit as well. Seems like the captain. No, sorry, I was just busy turning things off. And now we have Iona on cruise cam. Oh yeah, Iona, not Iona, Ventura. Oh, it's so dark. I've forgotten what it was like doing the uh, ship's TV when, when it's dark. I mean, some of the ships are lit up with lots of light, so they're quite good, but it's just, it's not the same, is it, when it's daylight? Different experience, but, uh, you know, we enjoy all ships all times of the year. I think that's the way to put it. I, I like big ships, I cannot lie. Oh, they're champions, planes and trains. It says parents are sailing on Iona tonight. Well, excellent ship, mate. Uh, see if you can get, give us a wave if they're on the port side balcony or they can go up on the top deck and let us know where they are and we'll zoom in at them waving. That'll be fun. We've got Ventura departing now. She's off for a 14-night cruise to the Canary Islands via Lisbon, Cadiz, Arrecife, La Palma, Grand Canaria, Santa Cruz, La Tenerife, Santa Cruz, La Palma, and Funchal. I'm sure the weather down there must be rather, rather decent this time of year. Looks to be a lot of balconies. Okay, all the lights on the balconies. I, fortunately, I don't have the radio on access to them. And I was saying earlier, I've got a, I've got a new software-defined radio coming. Or oh, actually, I have that on all the parts there now. That should give me better reception, so I can pick up the radio. But at the moment, I'm out without the radio, so I don't have any numbers for you. Passenger numbers or crew numbers or any of those sorts of things. A bit of a shame. Come on, camera, focus. I can see a few shipmates on the balcony. I'm kind of so surprised. It's a lovely warm evening. I can see quite a lot of people on the top deck. There's a bar, there's a bar up there or something. Oh, I think the cruise cam is not best suited for focusing at night time. Come on, camera. Focus, 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 focus. Focus, focus. No, I don't think it's going to focus. Lit up quite well from the side there's quite a lot of light in that uh in the dockhead area of the port of southampton there i've seen to notice it. it does light up the ships quite nicely there we go just go back to the very near not very camp go back 
to uh, cruise cam. See the stern of Iona there. Give you some idea of scale. I can still see a few shipmates on their balconies on Iona. They could have a good view. They said there's probably some honking between the two ships. Like I say, I'm not in port at the moment, so I can't hear it. Normally, I just uh, open the door to my cabin and pick up the sounds of the ships coming and going. But I, just, I look forward to be backing back into port soon. Uh, well, I did see someone say they're going to Hamburg to see Ventura. Who was that then? Oh, it's Ray. Oh, there, Ray. He says he's going to visit Ventura when she's in Hamburg. Excellent shipmate. Uh, Champions Planes and Trains, whose parents are on board, says he thinks they're currently eating dinner. They're currently at the buffet, are they? Well, that's a good tactic. Go get to the buffet early, fill up, and then enjoy the departure. seen I'm not sure if I've seen Ventura lately or not I'm not entirely sure I can't remember one of the older ships certainly in the P&O fleet I see a maiden voyage was 2008 116,000 gross tons and length of 288 meters 19 decks in total, 14 of which are passenger accessible. Top speed of 23.2 knots or 43 kilometers an hour for all you continental types, 26.7 miles per hour in the King's units. Capacity, yeah, 3,192 passengers. I don't, know, I don't have any crew information. I'm guessing crew is probably around the 8 900 mark. I don't have VTS radio at the moment, so I can't uh, can't keep updated on that one. Oh, it's gone very dark, isn't it? Can't see the bow anymore. Oh, there, Kay says she's on Ventura next year. 40 weeks to go. Like a child at Christmas time, isn't it? Only 400 days till Christmas. And shipmate Robert Leland is counting down as well to his fueled cruise. 35 weeks away. 35 weeks away. So that make that makes that probably... Is that going to be middle of the summer? Well, that'll be a nice time to go into the fueled shipmate. I hope you have a great ship trip. Zigby68 says, uh, mine's 50 weeks today. <laughs> DP Transport says 23 weeks. And he's on Ventura. Everyone's got, uh, everyone's counting down in weeks. I wonder if you've got those, have you got those, um, one of those old fashioned sort of calendar things on your fridges where you sort of rip off the weeks left to go. <laughs> uh, Ray says he was on Ada Luna this year. It was amazing. And, it's planned to go on many other cruises. Ah, excellent. Champions Blazing Trains, 26 weeks to go until he's on Arvia. Wow. Everyone is counting down the weeks, aren't they? Oh, interesting lights here I've just noticed on Iona going on there. It looks like the night lights or the bridge crew. Rather reminds me, it more reminds me that the ship looks like a, cyc um, uh, a Cylon. A red strip across the front there. 
red lights typically don't uh, affect the vision as much as white lights. I wonder if that's what that's about. Yeah, it's looks quite red in there, doesn't it? It's surprising when you're out at sea, it looks dark, but once you've let your, your eyes accustomed to the darkness, you can actually see quite a lot. I know certainly when I've done some night passages, it's amazing what you can see. And if there's a if there's a moon out, it's like someone's turned a floodlight on. But if you're inside the vessel, you can't see out the windows. It's a completely different experience. You end up crashing into things, which I try not to do. Hello there, Vanessa Wells. She's at 40 weeks to until sailing on Britannia. Uh, Judy Pickles, shipmate, says she's still got a diary. Liz H says the most amazing of experiences, the fields, that's what she's talking about, went in May on Iona, gobsmacked, is the analogy. Shipmate Robert Sawyer's on the MSC Virtuoso on 19th of May, so he's probably coming in to maybe have a little check out of the MSC Virtuoso later, see if he can work out where his cabin is. Shipmate Ray says if something he says doesn't make sense, that's because he's German, he's learning English. Well, you're doing a pretty good job, shipmate. I, I can work out mostly what you're saying all the time. I can't work out what I'm saying half the time. Shipmate Trevor Hillary, seven weeks until New Year on Arcadia. Oh, New Year on Arcadia. Well, that sounds like a treat. King's Holman says saving up for a trip on the floating bridge. Oh, yes. Is that, was that the floating bridge in Carol's shipmates? Because not only do you have to save up for it, you have to get your timing right. Not always in service. Very unreliable. Liz H, 41 days. We'll be on Arvia and Maiden sailing. Day is my 60th. Whoa, that'll be a day. 60th birthday, Maiden sailing. It's, it's good timing, shipmates. We can just see the Ventura now sneaking out from behind Iona. You can see a few shipmates on the down there by the well deck of Iona. That's a good sign. I would suggest that a six o'clock departure will be imminent. And then we'll have a we'll follow Iona out. Then I'll probably have a bit of a gap because MSC Virtuosa is not until eight o'clock. So I'll probably have a bit of a bit of galley time. Well, there, Iona Baker says it should be on the Iona in April and October. April and October? I oh, worked. You're certainly packing those in, aren't you? Oh, Etienne Rohr, our correspondent from the Isle of Wight, says that the floating bridge is working at the moment. Oh, <laughs> that makes a change. There was a, an old floating bridge that had been there for many years. It goes across the the River Medina in Cowes. And I think it had been, I think it was 20, 30 years old. Been there for a long time. And they decided to replace it with a new one. And the new one has been nothing but trouble. Unreliable, breaks down, just doesn't work. It goes off to be fixed, comes back, breaks immediately. It's been, <laughs> it's, it's been not very good. Um, so yes, yeah, so it's turned into a bit of a, bit of an amusing point on the Isle of Wight, this floating bridge. It only travels, Probably 100 meet, not even 100 metres, 75 metres. Uh, but yeah, here breaks down frequently. Oh, one, very reliable, not a problem. Not quite sure why, why they're having so many problems with the new one. Oh, there, Grant Waldo, five weeks until QM2. Oh, I haven't seen QM2 for a while. This time of year, I often like to drone the ships coming in. Weather-wise, it can be rather annoying with the wind and the rain. That's what you often get is some wonderful sunrises. And so if you can coordinate a sunrise with a ship arrival, they look fantastic. Tricky to do, though. Well, there's shipmate for this world. says, can't count the number of weeks. Too many. 
but she's on Britannia in 2024 to the fjords. Yeah, that's quite a lot of weeks, isn't it? It's going to be somewhere in the somewhere in the region of 100 or so, I'd imagine. That's a lot of weeks. I think you probably hold the record for the most weeks at the moment. With a Robert Neath says, due to bring Arvia back from the Caribbean in March, we'll be arriving back in Southampton on Sunday the 2nd of April. Ah, interesting stuff, shipmate. Does, are, are you travelling as crew or are you travelling as a guest? There's the uh, Fawley refinery there in the background. Is he smoking away? You can see the wind direction today uh, i certainly couldn't agree the direct oh it's gone the one rins move around to the southeast now southeast wind direction it's a little bit a little bit gusty oh the winds died off now about nine knots gusting to 12. Shipmate George Emmett says the old one is in Gosport. Well, maybe they should go and get the old floating bridge and put it back into service. It was a lot more reliable. TCC says uh, Queen Mary 2 during uh, Southampton tomorrow morning. Probably would be a good day to drone. I said, only, only thing is, I suspect it will arrive too early. Oh dear. What's happened here? No, it's, my, my camera has decided to. Uh, oh, there we go. I was having a funny five minutes. It was stuck in a bit of a loop, it seems. It's going in and out, in and out, in and out. I think it's. I think this is. This is all systematic and slightly restrictive. Internet connection here makes controlling things tricky. If I just check over, see if we can few sh see a few shipmates on the well deck there. Oh, it's a good sign if they're there. Normally means we we'll see a departure shortly. So she, I ended due to depart at six o'clock. It looks like that'll be on time. And then MSC Virtuals are eight, and oh, I should be nipping down to the galley for some grog in between. Oh, there, Tina Stockman said, looking forward to the Arvia and looking forward to cruising on Arvia in September. Robin, he says he's travelling from a guest from Guernsey. From Guernsey. Oh, right. Oh, interesting. Oh, I was going to check the weather. Tizzy C says, uh, Mary, two's right tomorrow. Let me check the weather. Weather forecast for tomorrow morning. Mm. Sunny, cloudy. And what time? So the sun rises at 7.17. suspect Queen Mary 2 is going to be in much earlier than that. Queen Mary 2 is due to arrive at 6.15, so she'll, in reality, where's she, where's she docking? Uh, 106. Yeah, she'll probably come in even earlier than that, so probably quite dark, unfortunately. It's just a, such a fine window. I think there's only... I've, I have made some really good videos of the sunrise arrivals, but it's, it's almost just a very narrow window, about 10, 15 minutes, that I've got to be in the right place at the right time when the ship comes past. And it's quite tricky to achieve, but it is wonderful when it does. I think I've got a, an amazing sunset arrival. Actually, it might be of Ventura. It was, all, it was one of Ventura or Arcadia or something. And it's probably the best sunset arrival I had. If, in fact, it was so surreal. Um, if you didn't know otherwise, you would assume that I've added lots of special effects to the video. Our correspondent from the Isle of Wight, Edwin Raw, says that the floating the old floating bridge had part problems that can't be made. And I don't know about that. Seems like a seems like a cop out to me. Oh, 
Hoi there, Lou Work says they'll be on Britannia 2024. On the honeymoon to the Canaries. We'll be waving from an excellent well, Congratulations, shipmate. That seems like you've planned well. Ah, oh, shipmate Bertie Doe says, according to Piano's website, maximum crew is expected is 1226. Well, thank you for that, shipmate. That's very helpful. Starting to lose the quality here on the Ventura. There is quite a lot of bright lights down there at the at the uh, refinery. Oh, it does flood the camera out. Maybe I'll try zooming in a bit. I'll try zooming in. Maybe that will help. Yeah, I think that helps. If you're only able to focus. Focus. Come on then, yes. I don't remember seeing the red lights on Iona before in the bridge area. I'm not sure if that's new or if I just wasn't paying attention. There's a good chance the captain wasn't paying attention, so let's assume they've always been there. Currently quarter to six. I own a due to departure at six o'clock. Haven't had any updates that that's not the case, so we we'll, shall look forward to that. There is a bit of a breeze and it is causing the netly cam to wobble. We will try and fix that over the Christmas period, apparently. The Commodore down at Netley Cliffs Sailing Club have said that they are going to rig up some rig up some guy lines and we'll level it out, straight it up with other maintenance at the same time. So that'll that'll be helpful. It'll be a level and also less wobbly, hopefully. Kevin Two says the Iona red bridge lights have been on since the night got dark. Up there we go. Then. Just obviously, Captain's not paying too much attention these days. Certainly, some bright lights on that tanker there, isn't it? this point as the Ventura is going down Southampton water so this is where I was this afternoon we went down to here and then made a hard hard turned port and went up the river Hamble as she goes 
down here. She actually gets very close to the Borley terminal here. You can see there's a number of the vessels here. We've got the Eco Universe, Leon Zeus, Bondi, the Monus one, and the one with the bright lights on, I think is the Phoenix Vigor. I did notice that one today as I went past. And at the end, there are a couple of tugs the Apex and the Phoenix, I think. Phoenix. So, yeah, so very busy it was today. I was on the walks there. They were lovely conditions. Probably the one of the last times that a lot of shipmates are going to take their boats out before the it just gets too wet and windy. Unless you're a sailor. Sailors seem to be more hardier. Uh, power boaters seem to be, well, how should we say it, a gentler folk. Don't like spilling our rums and gin and tonics. Kevin Two says that uh, Queen Mary Two should be on Cow's Cow at five fifteen. Sounds about right. She, yeah, she's supposed to arrive at whatever I said it was six six fifteen. Six fifteen. She's supposed to arrive at six fifteen. She'll probably be in port before then, more like sort of five ten to five, uh, ten to six or something like that. And it'll just be it'll be too dark, unfortunately, because the sunrise is not till seven seventeen. So way too dark. They would tend to arrive earlier. Don't tend to leave on time either, actually. Reliable sometimes, these cruise ships. Seventeen fifty-one, and nine minutes to go until potentially Iona departs on time, which she should do. She's pretty good at departing on time. And it was a whole problem when we had all the vaccinations. COVID things that was causing a problem. Although I did read today that the one of the princess ships, and I can't remember which one it was, uh, caught got caught with eight hundred passengers on board, um, displaying signs of COVID or asymptomatic. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. They're docking into somewhere in Australia. That's uh, going to be a bit of a nightmare. I haven't heard any about these problems before, uh, for a while on the cruise ships. heading down Southampton Water towards Cowshot's bit in Cowshot Castle. Can't see it today. It's too dark out there. Earlier this year, in February, actually, Ventura had a propulsion problem just south of Plymouth in the English Channel. The problem, the failure of the propulsion was at the end of a 35-day cruise to the Caribbean. Apparently, failure... It was about 30 minutes long and she drifted beam on to her prevailing waves at around four knots. All restored though, apparently. Earlier in June this year, a forklift operated in the port dropped a luggage cart into the river. So 
some of the luggage was recovered and some was lost. Well, that's the second. I mean, I heard that was that was in June that the luggage cart was dropped into the water. But there was also uh, some luggage dropped in the other day when we did a broadcast a few weeks ago. I've not heard of it before, but it, it seems to be a, a recurring thing at the moment. Lost luggage. Check on Iona and see what's going on there. We've got the red bridge lights at the very front there, near the bow. To turn the lights off on the terminal. I can see a few flashes, Casey. There must be the old fireworks going off. very distance there could do with it there's some more cameras couldn't we if you do happen to have a property that overlooks the water somewhere and you'd like a camera let me know and we'll see what we can sort out i am pushing forward on a couple of other locations but it's just slow people are keen to get in contact and then slow to actually realize the situation Also, if you are a drone pilot and you'd be interested in helping out with the live stream, let me know. Just going to check on the well deck on my own and see what's going on there, see what the shipmates are up to. It looks like they're there still, so... Can't see, can't see any of the lines moving at the moment. Looks like she's. Well, I don't know. Might be some lines. Hmm. You would have thought there'd been some lines at those two portholes at the front, the ones that are staggered on top of each other, wouldn't you? Now she is singled up already, of course. She may have singled up already. We'll look forward, shall we? I can see lots of lines on still. So she hasn't singled up yet. Starting to look like a glowing blob in the distance, Ms. Ventura. Shipmate Rapister asks, does QM2 always dock at the QE2 terminal? No, she tends to... She often, actually, shipmate, she often tends to dock at the ocean terminal most of the time looks very majestic when you drive into the port of Southampton or if you're especially if you're on the water but if you drive in you can see the Queen Mary 2 and the ocean total looming large it does look rather rather fantastic Hell's Bell says that Captain Bourne on the Arcadia calls the lines bits of string. Yeah, well, they are like bits of string, really, compared to the size of the ship, aren't they? They look at those lines coming up, do you think? Oh, sorry, I was looking at the... Looks like those lines might be coming up. Oh, it looks like it, yes. We must be getting to the stage where we're singling up. So we'll just have a line front and rear while they get things ready. And so those lines are... Are those lines coming up? Yeah, they, I can see the movements. Yes, they're coming up. I would like to have a look inside of this uh, area of the ship. I think that's called the well deck. Must be lots of winches and lines. Quite interesting to see that. One day, shipmates, I'll get on board. I'll, you know, we'll, in their infinite wisdom, we'll see it right to invite certain ships on board.
with Elisa Sargent says, just put an advert on my mate's drone channel. Oh, well, thanks for that shit, mate. Perfect. Rapister says he's going to buy a transatlantic trip in 2024 on the Queen Mary 2. I think that's probably the, an excellent idea. Travelling on the Queen Mary 2. Across the Atlantic. I think that's what she's designed for. So the line's coming up, so I think departure at 6 o'clock is looking very imminent. Chap there must have a great view being on the well deck. I wonder if they'll let me, if I get on board iron, I wonder if they'll let me stand out on there or I'll need some sort of training in health and safety. I've had a couple of lines come up, still got these lines here. Let me, a couple more lines to go and then I imagine we'll be looking at a six o'clock departure. Venturus flying away down Southampton Water. That looks like one of the red funnels in the distance there. Or is that... That could be the ferry to Portsmouth. Hmm. Let me check. Let me check on that. That's interesting, isn't it? I think that's the ferry to Portsmouth. Oh, amazing. I didn't know we could see that at night time. So, yeah, so that is... So that is a bright... There's a very dull blob between the two bright blobs on the screen. That is the ferry to Portsmouth. That's quite impressive that we can see it. I did wonder because the navigational lights on top suggest she's going backwards and that's what she does. She comes out of Fishbourne backwards, turns around probably about here and then heads off to Portsmouth. Now there's always a two white lights on top. There's one higher and one lower and the higher ones at the rear. So it really looks like she's going backwards. All those lines are coming in. And that looks like the last line is in. I would imagine she is free and single. Can't see any move. Yes, I can see a touch of movement now. It's amazing how quickly they start to move. Not sure that we're going to be able to see too many people on their balconies at the moment. It is quite dark. Although yesterday we had an excellent shipmate. He was communicated from the Queen Victoria's balcony by flashing his balcony light on and off. It was very effective. I found him very quickly. So Iona will just nudge forward ever so slightly, get her away from the dock side. And she'll slip it in reverse and head on out to the middle swing ground swing around and then off on her voyage which is where i can hear you asking captain where is she going well she is also off on a 14 night canary cruise via funchal santa cruz de tenerife las palmas de gran canaria arrecife cadiz and lisbon so almost going around the opposite way to ventura and obviously, uh, they'll pass at some point. I wonder where they'll pass. Probably in Tenerife. Hmm. Oh, 
I'm just looking, so I was just even though she's released the lines, it looks like I'm not moving very fast. I have taken all the lines up, haven't I? Or did I just miss something? Or is she just singled up now? Let's have a look. Hmm, she's not moving. Not moving and no lines out. That's unusual. Ah, oh, she's moving backwards now. Ah. Oh. Took a little while longer going to practice. Normally they move forwards and within a minute or two they start moving. Start moving backwards. In case you're wondering, Ventura's at the end of Southampton Water and she's just heading round Cowshot Spit. There we go, now she's going backwards. Now she's picking up speed. Interesting travel trip from Hell's Bells there. Suggests that if you only want to do one leg of transatlantic, you go from east to west. Otherwise, the days are 23 hours long from east to west, west to east, I think he means, and then 25 from east to west. You want your longer days, don't you? Could do with a few more hours at the buffet. Extra buffet time. Move the other camera around. I don't know if we can see much on Netley Cam. I think it's focusing at the moment. There we go. The odd person there on their balconies on the port side of Iona. It's probably about this sort of time that they down to the buffet. Iona, I have quite a large cruise ship, one of the largest ones we have in port. Probably our largest ship that we have constantly returning. Do get some other ships in and out of port, but I think Iona is the largest regular visitor. 184,000 gross tons. 344 meters in length. A beam of 42 meters. Top speed. Service speed, rather, is 17 knots. 31 kilometers now for you continental types. Or 20 miles per hour in King's units. So I think the service speed is not quite the same as the top speed, but they're all about the same these days, all these cruise ships. They don't actually go much more than. 2022 knots. Hi there, Ray. And Ray's our shipmate from Germany. He says that he's hyped for Avia. Saw her in Papenburg and she looked beautiful. Good to know that shipmate. Perhaps uh, you could send us some photos of her. Hi there, Sandra Wright. There is just a lot of Iona ship. Not sure on numbers. I don't have the radio working at the moment. But 
She has a capacity for 5,200 passengers and 1,700 crew, making it uh, very nearly 7,000 souls on board when she's full, which is a very impressive. That's a lot of people. Some of the new cruise ship, I think it was the Icon. I think that's the... Um, who, who's the Icon ship? Uh, so Royal Caribbean or something? Oh. Icon of the Seas. And the Icon of the Seas is, I think, going to have almost... Yes, that's right. Five thousand. So she's she's going to be uh, on similar in capacity, but potentially even more, somewhere in the region of eight thousand passengers. Which is that's even more. That's almost that's a thousand more than Iona. Royal Caribbean. That's it. Thanks, shipmate. Uh, I think she's due. Uh, she's not. Uh, I think she's due yet, uh, due to enter service in 2024, so it's a couple of years before we will see her. Uh, I'm not sure we'll see her on the channel, unfortunately, for a while. She's not going to be based, I think, in the Caribbean, from what uh, shipmate was telling me. I think that's the ship he was telling me about. She is supposed to dock, more supposed to dock in Southampton, but plans have changed. Oh, there, shipmate Sarah Merritt says, Could I say hello to Maisie and Betty? Well, ahoy there, Maisie and Bethany. Welcome aboard, shipmates, and I'm, I hope you're old enough to subscribe to the channel. <laughs> about C Iona reversing out on Netley Cam as well. I think wind's picked up again potentially. Is the wind picked up? Mm, no, it's still in the nine. No, it's still it's actually died off a bit. It was a bit gusty earlier. Yes, yeah, so there are actually quite a number of shipmates on the balcony. I'm just looking now. I can see quite a number scattered all along here on the port side. Iona has to... Iona is the only ship that I know that docks at the ocean terminal this way around. All the other ships dock the other way around. And the reason for that is because Iona is so large, the hatches on the side that allow access for you know goods and rum to be put on board are at locations that don't suit when she's round the other way around. So she has to be bow in. Hi there, Keith Walker says, uh, wants to know what sort of camera I use. Well, if you look on the YouTube channel for the Netley Cam and Cruise Cam, in the description, it will tell you what sort of cameras they are. This Cruise Cam is a better... Well, this I've used two types of camera. One's Cruise Cam, one's made by Sunbar. Cruise Cam is a mile site camera. It's 4K, has much better zoom. It's a really good camera, but it's not quite as good in the night time. Whereas Netley Cam is only a 1080p camera made by Sunbar. And that is quite good at night. And not so quite, not so good in the day, it's only 1080p. Uh, but it was, quite, it was quite a bit cheaper. They're both made by Chinese manufacturers. Sunbar, yeah, the Sunbar camera is not as, not as good 
but it's still very decent. This this Mars Sight camera is in daylight is stunning. It's almost sort of broadcast quality, I would say. With their Lou work. I'd like to thank the captain for the commentary and looking forward to your next. Well, thank you, shipmates. What the captain likes to hear is stroking his ego. With it, Christopher Smalley asking, is Iona sailing south to the Carrots? Yes, she is indeed sailing south to the Carrots. Although I think she's stopping. Uh, yes, yeah, she's going to the Canary Islands first and then coming back via uh, Cadiz and Lisbon. With well, their shipmate Janet Horton says that Arvia will do half, will sail half a year from Southampton for the Mediterranean cruises and then reposition the Caribbean in the winter. They have booked her uh, for the October 23rd for a 14 night Mediterranean cruise from Southampton. Mm, I think I'd like to reposition to the Caribbean during winter. Shipmate Dan Williams is very excited. And this makes him even more excited because he'll be on Britannia in three weeks today. Two weeks around the Caribbean. Why, you've picked a great time of year to go away, shipmate. Just, I think, when the weather will probably turn cold, chilly, wet and miserable, and you'll be enjoying yourself on a... Fantastic cruise ship in the Caribbean. Christopher Smalley says he's off on Arvia in a Caribbean cruise in March 2024. There are lots of shipmates here that have booked up on Arvia. I feel like I need to be on the maiden voyage to report back what's going on. starting to spin now she'll be heading down towards the dock head on her way out way to the canary islands just see her in the gap there you can see how big she is compared to the ventura that the left oh there's some fireworks you know big she is compared to ventura quite a bit larger so many more decks longer wider girthier beamier taller longer heavier basically everything more really more powerful, slower. Oh, that's one thing that's just is slightly slower. I'm not sure how relevant that is. On camera. Mate, Elizabeth Liebel has a whole lot of things booked up. Aurora in Easter 2024 to Amsterdam, Britannia in September 24 to the fields, and Arcadia in November 24 to the Canaries. Gosh, shipmates, you'll you'll be uh, you'll have sea legs with all those cruises.
Iona just completing her turn. The reason Iona, the other day we had the maiden voyage of carnival celebration, almost a similar size ship, and she didn't go back as far. She didn't reverse out as far. Iona always seems to reverse right off the side of the screen here. You can see her spinning and get a good view here of just how fast I own a spin. 180,000 gross tons of ship spinning around faster than I could swim. Boy, there, David Baker. Shipmate says he's going on Arcadia in July around Britain. Oh, that sounds exciting. I didn't know they did round Britain cruises. And shipmate Steve says he's just got home from a cruise on Virtuosa. Well done, shipmate. I hope you had a good time. That's been quite pleasant coming in this morning into the port of Southampton. The weather was quite decent. <laughs> and shipmate Elizabeth Leeborn, who's on a lot of cruises in 2024, says she's not cruising next year, making up for it in 2024. Oh, fair enough, shipmate. I like your priorities there. You do it or you don't do it. You'll be a seasoned cruiser by the end of that year. In fact, they'll probably call you crew at that rate. Ahoy, shipmate uh, Lee Kin Wing just donated five. Can't you guess that Singapore dollars? Excellent. Many thanks for that, shipmate. I didn't realise we had viewers in Singapore. Hope you're enjoying the live stream here, even though it's slightly dark this time of year. Oh, it's just giving us some information that's. Queen Victoria and Queen Mary too are just about to pass each other just west of Canterbury. We could have a look and have a look at that, see what we can see. I've got a bit of distance between them, but they will. They probably will pass. And then we can see Iona just popping out from behind the grain silos. See PO cruises lit up on the top near the funnel. It's the large atrium has all the disco lights. I believe someone said there's some they have um some shows going on there, I think. I can't it's difficult to remember all these cruise ships when you haven't actually been on them. It's all, all the new ones coming out. It's difficult to remember what they're all what all happens on them. <laughs> I don't remember how many bars are on. I seem to remember they're about 19 bars or so on Iona. There we go. There's Iona just coming past the dock head now. Heading down Southampton Water. The 
memory serves me correctly, there's a wonderful area on the stern of Iona. Yeah, there we go. We're up here by the infinity pools. I don't think we'll see, but previously, a few weeks ago, we had people swimming in the infinity pools up at the top there. You can see that blue, that pale blue rectangle. Uh, yeah, it's not... I don't think we can focus at this poor light level. Let's give it a chance, give it a chance, see if it will focus. But that's, I think there's a bar up there. I think that's where I would be sitting. We've had some lovely sun sets while the iron has been departing. Oh, there it goes, focusing now. Oh, there's a few people up there. No one in the pool, though. Yeah, a few. Oh, I see someone waving a torch. <laughs> Excellent. Way, there we go. I <laughs> don't know who that is. But there's a shipmate sending out signals could be waving of course to someone on town keep here i'd like to think they're on the trying to gain the attention of the channel here well well done shipmate it certainly worked look at a great cabin you've got there as well right on the corner i think it's on the corner balcony good view there excellent i'm very envious of your location Yeah, there's a few people up there. There we go, just slipping past the dock head. Oh, I can see the chap's waving his torch again. Oh, I say chap, we don't know. Shipmates, I'll call them shipmates. He's right underneath the bar area there, so might not be the best location it might have a lot of traffic above you. Oh, he's doing some vigorous waving now. I do appreciate that. That is a another technique. If you are on the ship at night time and you're departing, you'll be seen. Wave your torch on your mobile phone. That comes up quite clearly. Or, uh, as our shipmate did yesterday, flash your balcony lights. And you can see these infinity pools there with no one in them. <laughs> Excellent shipmate, I do like a spot of waving. Oh, quite interesting this evening. There's actually no Roros blocking our view. I watched one of the Roros come out as I was going back up Southampton Water, and that was parked about here. And we've got a good view of Iona departing. Iona off on a 14 night cruise to the Canary Islands via Funchal in Madeira, Santa Cruz de Tenerife, La Palma de Gran Canaria, Arrecife, Cadiz, and Lisbon.
And you can see all of the cars in the car parks here. They're ready to go on the Roros. Looks to me like they're Range Rovers and Minis. So they'll all be for export. Who says we don't manufacture anything in the UK? Lots of exports there. Shipmate Andy's answered my question. He says the bar area by the infinity pools was a good place to see the northern lights at the back end of August last year at 1.30 a.m. in the morning. Trip coming back from Norway. Oh, my word, shipmate. You're really tickling my fancy there. Sitting on the stern of Iona in a bar at 1.30 in the morning, maybe in the infinity pool, watching the lights, the northern lights. The aurora borealis. Um, that sounds fantastic to me. Oh, shipmate Lisa Sargent says, uh, I shall have someone who would like to contact you about drone work. I've sent him your live stream. Well, thanks for that, shipmate. Uh, you'll get in contact with me. If you go to the About bit on YouTube, you can find my email address there. Probably the best way to get in contact or leave me a comment or something like that. Marvellous. I'm just going to nip to the galley a second. Uh, but I shall continue following Iona as she departs down Southampton Water. And then we'll be back, I would think, approximately uh, quarter past eight, 20 past eight for the MSC Virtuosa.
Ahoy, shipmates! MSC Virtuosa on the move. 7.4 knots, breaking the speed limit in port. Speed limit port's only 6 knots. Obviously making up for a slightly late departure there. Should be visible on Netsney Cam, I would say, in the next three or four minutes. She'll be coming in from the right-hand side of the screen there. The weather is still very pleasant. Still a balmy 14 and a half degrees C here. About 100% humidity. Visibility has dropped, though. We're down to 12.8 nautical miles of visibility. And air pressure is slightly falling, but still quite high. Therefore, it's giving us a extra high tide. And there she is now on the right-hand side of the screen. Ahoy there, Vanessa Wells. And ahoy there, Rab Nesbitt, who's suggesting that he's a stowaway on board. Well, stowaway, shipmate, and enjoy the sights of the MSC Virtuoso. MSC Virtuosa was launched in November 2019. It's so a relatively new ship. Also 181,000 gross tons, 331 metres in length, not quite as long as Iona, but similar gross tonnage, 43 metres in beam. Maximum capacity, 6,334 passengers with 1,704 crew. That makes, that's a lot of shipmates on board us. It's almost 8,000 shipmates on board. As you can see, she's quite clearly sticking way up above the row row that's there. Clearly visible coming down through the dockhead. Ah, Daniel San remembers the maiden voyage with the cruise monkeys. Yeah, the cruise monkeys were on board. I think, was that the one there where they had their big uh, monkey, big fun monkey hands and they were waving them around? That was excellent. They were easy, very easy to see. They had big foam hands that were waving. Easy to spot. I suppose I better make sure that my I can control the uh, <laughs> I can control the camera. That would be useful, wouldn't it? Yeah, oh, there we go. It's working. Hoi there, shipmate CD asks how many are on this cruise. I'm afraid I don't have any numbers at the moment, shipmate. My VTS radio has not working and i cannot tell you unfortunately unless someone else has picked it up on the radio locally it should be almost visible on cruise cam any moment now yacht there coming back very late in the evening for a yacht to be out just about to see the navigation light on the right on the very top which looks like the anchor lights I can't see any navigation lights down below uh, there we go and we can see the bow of the msc virtuosa
as you can see a very large cruise ship indeed Sixteen passenger accessible decks. Top speed twenty three point twenty two point three knots. And oh, has one of those large screens up on the top there. Really a feature it seems of all the the modern cruise ships. Oh, question from Danielson there. When do they close the well deck? Oh, good question, shipmate. I don't actually know. I think it must be somewhere down Southampton Water. It's certainly open as it passed, as it passed the dock head. Uh, Danielson has talked about the well deck. You can just about see it on the bow of the ship. There's that little hatch that opens up. I think they keep a shipmate on there for a watch until it's until you're clear of, certainly clear of the dock. Um, to be honest, I've never seen them go up, but I've certainly noticed that they're not open uh, on when they got when they get the cow, so hmm. Good question, shipmate. Oh, in question I don't have the answer for. Perhaps we'll keep an eye on it this evening and see if we can work it out. And the MSC Virtuosa is on a. I think it's a. Uh, find out, shall we? It's excellent spanner. Kevin has filled me the information. It's on a seven night Northern European cruise by Hamburg, Rotterdam, Zeebrugge, and Le Havre. Looks like I can see a party going on on the top deck here on the stern. This looks like the sort of place I'd like to be. Let's see if we can get the camera to focus. See if we can see anyone having a good time. I suspect they might be coming back for an evening stroll after hitting that buffet hard while in port. Maybe a bit of a boogie woogie to jiggle that stomach around. Get all those profiteroles down there. Certainly see those lights changing colours up there. Not too many people out and about. It is getting a bit cooler. Hoy there, Tracy Etheridge. Oh, they'll be on Virtuos on 25th November. First time. Well, I hope you enjoy your cruise ship, mate. I've heard good things about Virtuosa. I think the cruise monkeys had a good trip. I seem to remember them talking about it. Oh, there's some flashing lights and moving lights, all sorts going on on the back of the MSC Virtuosa there. Oh, wait, there's Simon Parsons. Uh, he says only about two and a half thousand on board. He's on deck 14. He'll flash his cabin light shortly. <laughs> Excellent. This is the new form of communication. There's not many lights on, is there, on the on the cabins or on the balconies? I think it'd be very, very obvious if he starts flashing his cabin light. I saw one come on. No, don't, auto, don't know what auto is. No, stop it. Getting quite a lot of light reflection here in the uh, port. 
Radness bit says better school up on Morse code. Yes, I think we need to gen up on our Morse code. Henrik Dirks says they'll be going on board on the 14th. So I'm pissed says he flashed, but not sure it was picked up. No, I'm not sure it was either, shipmate. I can't be honest. I'm not sure I can see any lights on. Uh, whereabouts are you? Are you towards the bow or the stern or midships? Maybe you could leave your lights on and just flash your curtains open. <laughs> Like a like an old fashioned semaphore lamp. I imagine perhaps people on board enjoying the entertainment, not in their cabins. That's why we don't see many lights on. Well, oh, midship starboard. Uh, that will be a problem then, because we're looking at the port side. That's why we can't see you, shipmate. Very dark indeed. Still really mild for the time of year though. There's red jets shooting past there. In the distance here, above the multi-storey car parks on the end of the dockhead. So you can see the colourful lights there at the bar at the back. Shipmate Simon Parsons says she's not even half full. Very quiet on board. But she is huge. To be like the hatches are still open. Some debate as to what the name are. I don't actually know the name of the area. Someone said well deck once. It seemed to work for me. I may have a more accurate term, but I've not been able to find out. But we're talking about the area where all the the lines are. It does look quite quiet. There's not many lights on in the cabins, that's for sure. Oh, I can see the lift going down. That's quite neat, isn't it?
that's right bay blue ship maybe we're referring to the bow hatch doors i it's the area inside that i don't actually know what it's called someone suggested it was called the well deck i'm i don't know did it look i couldn't find out anything maybe though probably one of the captains would call it the area with all bits of string in it With that Heinrich Dirks is getting on board in Hamburg. Oh, excellent. Very dark down here. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this broadcast this evening. It's a little long with an interlude in the middle. Hopefully that gave you time to hit the galley. Yeah, if you do enjoy these broadcasts, please do think about subscribing. It is free. Just got to click on a button somewhere. It does help out the channel tremendously. And it's been a pleasure having all you shipmates on board. So until next time, shipmates, I shall continue following the MSC Virtuoso down Southampton Water, round Cowshot, Spit, around Brabble Bank, and on her way to. Let me just check where she's going. On her way to the Northern European cruise via Hamburg, Rotterdam, Zeebrugge, and Le Havre for seven nights. Wonderful. Until next time, shipmates.